Got another question here for the uh, 13 rates of reaction topic. So as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So if you wanted to try that first and then play on for the answers. Okay, so first thing, gonna use the graph to determine the order of reaction with respect to bromine. So I've managed to do the first two obvious um, half-lives. So I've gone from that concentration to half. So that's in red there. You can see the time period for that to happen is 190 seconds. I've then switched to pink and gone down from that concentration to half of that, which is that and then measured that time period, how long it's taken to go from there to there. And you can see it's slightly different, 210 seconds. So what you can say from that is the um, order of reaction with respect to bromine is one, first order, because the first two half-lives are approximately the same. Sometimes you don't get identical um, time periods. As long as they're broadly similar, then you can make that assumption that it's first order. Obviously, you've got to have that uh, working out on your graph for the examiner to credit. Um, but in words, just something really simple. So first two half-lives of 190 and 210 seconds are very similar. So we can say it's first order with respect to bromine. We're now going to use the graph to determine the initial rate of the reaction. So to get the initial rate, we draw a tangent to the curve at the start of the reaction. So obviously that's mine there. There's a bit of variation gonna be allowed here because obviously tangents can change ever so slightly. So anyway, this is how I would draw it. So I've got a change in the bromine concentration. Obviously it's starting at zero and going up to that. So my change in bromine concentration is 0 0.01 and my tangent's cutting that time axis there at 250, so that's my change in time. So the gradient's obviously the change in concentration over the change in time. So from my tangent, I'm getting an initial rate of four times 10 to the minus five, and don't forget E units, moles per decimeter cubed, obviously we divide moles per decimeter cubed by seconds, moles per decimeter cubed per second. Moving on to the calculation of the rate constant. So our rate equation is just gonna look like this because we're told that since the methanoic acid is in a large excess, it's effectively zero order. So we're gonna ignore the methanoic acid. The rate equation is literally just that. So we just need to rearrange for K and then put in our rate that we've just calculated and the initial concentration of bromine and that'll give us a value for K. So using my initial rate of four times 10 to the minus five, the initial concentration of bromine is 0 0.01. So we're getting a K value of four times 10 to the minus three. Moving up the units now, which we mustn't forget to include, I've just switched the numbers for the units of rate over the units of concentration. And then obviously we can cancel the moles per decimeter cubed. So we're just left with seconds to the minus one. Now there is another way you can work out the um, value for K using lin2 over the half-life. Some of you might have done it this way, so I'll just quickly explain that. Now because I've got two different values for the those two half-lives, I've taken the average. So remember I've got 190 and 210. So I'm saying my half-life is 200. So lin2 over 200 gives me that value for K. So you can see it's similar to that. Obviously the unit is still going to be seconds to the minus 1. And just beware that um, the lin2 over t a half method is only applicable to first order reactions.